Hey, how y'all doing today? Me, I'm doing phenomenal. About to go out there and enjoy the sunshine. Meet with a client who wants to do a condo complex, possibly with using some materials. But also over here on the other edge of Southwest Texas. I'd like to see that border developed by friendly people. People that would want to do something sustainable, not just a bunch of shit rock in a house, you know, apartment complex that looks like a big box with ugly windows. We got too many of those. Um, I encourage people all the time, if you want to build something, build something with some flavor, build something smaller, but with style. If you build big, which was kind of a phenomena that went on for about 30 years in our country, bigger, 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 and you want to know what big is, come to Texas. Would you believe a couple, two people, in one case I had, built an 18,000 square foot house just for them. No kids, 18,000 square feet. Another one, the record I think in Texas is 41,500 square foot residence. That's the size of a small Walmart in an average small town for a residence. <laughs> you wouldn't have to do jogging. You just chase each other around the house. But imagine that. How do you go around and check for leaks in seven bathrooms? And who goes in seven bathrooms? So why do I think tiny? Because if you build yourself a mansion, typically you're going to die pretty soon after that. It's kind of like building your own tomb, your own uh, monument. It happens all the time. I've, I've toured many houses over the years of rich people. That built themselves this incredible mansion and effectively left it to their widow who lived in it as it ran down and then contributed to whatever hysterical society they had locally to go ahead and take care of it with tax dollars now i recommend that we take apart some of these big old obsolete structures houses and such that have 14 foot ceilings that, that no longer are usable or 12 foot ceilings or 10 foot ceilings are nice i like those 12 foot ceilings i like if you go ahead and split the room and you do a loft on the upper half and a desk on the lower half. And you can actually retool a lot of those. But truth is, a lot of the older um, structures sooner or later have to come down. Um, and it's odd. The effort to try to preserve the look of it a lot of times creates a, a facade. Like in Paris, France, um, when I went back over there to get my son and have him cremated, one of the really crazy things about the city was that you'd see a whole look like fronts of like an old street. But if you go up and look in the windows in the back, they basically had torn everything down behind the front facade and put a giant metal building, a steel building, and filled it in. And put houses in there, or residences, or condos, whatever you want to call it. But the front, that way, was preserved. Now, our hysterical societies in our country do that, too. They put a bunch of people on the board, and they say, you cannot tear that house down on the front. You need it to look like that. Now, what you want to do on the inside, you can do anything you want. And so they do. Now, in London, I understand they're actually going into the ground. You need more square footage, you can't go bigger, wider, front, back, setback. So you go down. And they've been finding all sorts of stuff. In the process of going down, they've dug up all sorts of interesting things. Uh, history that's not supposed to be there that's buried in the ground, which means evidence that there's a history that's not supposed to be there, including a tunnel went all the way over to Europe. Now, the reason I'm getting into this real quick is that there's a lot of history that's lost underground. How to get there. Catastrophism explains it pretty well. There's these catastrophes that happen that are global. Floods, earthquakes, volcanoes. I mean, these are crazy, very big events like what we're seeing now. now in the past, if you want to use that as a reference point to go ahead and prepare, you would probably want to go ahead and study it a little bit. What the hell? autodidactic as we are and we learn from the past and now we're finding out that the reason they built in wall areas in all the little um say like england was to block the wind so they could still have some trees and stuff growing and some food growing inside massive starvation 1600 really big event there where we had that go down um these are all pertinent in that if we want to learn how to survive as things change, you want to downsize into an affordable space, meaning you can heat it, cool it, and you still have money left over for food, and you have um, um, the means 
the means means uh, uh, money. Well, if you got a job, great. If you don't, you don't need a lot of means to support a tiny house. And it beats the heck out of being homeless. Now, what is a home? A home is where the heart is, right? So you want to build someplace that you really love to be. That's a home. It doesn't have to be big. I assure you that. I'm very happy in a tiny, tiny house. The tiniest space I ever lived in was a school bus. I lived in that in 1981. I moved um, from Florida all the way out to Washington State, down through Las Vegas, all the way across to Oklahoma, and down to Austin, Texas, where I eventually sold the bus. That's the advantage of a bus. You don't have to have something to pull it with, but dang hard things to park. Um... There's lots of ways you can make a portable house, a portable home. And in this day and age, it's not like it used to be. It used to be you could kind of hide, just go into the park, city park, park overnight. I did it lots of times. And great, you're good. You sleep, get up the next day, drive off. Nowadays, you can't park anything just anywhere. Especially now that some guy used a camper to kind of cause this real big ruckus up in New York City. Yeah, now all of a sudden, they don't seem to like people parking campers around. And actually, it happened in other places. Um, but you can have all sorts of things in there that are a problem. For example, propane tanks and other such things that might just have leaks inside and gas explosions and stuff like that can happen. It's not that terribly uncommon to have a... Uh, a problem with RVs because as they get older and they're not made that well to begin with and you drive them down the road, you get they shake and they shimmy and joints get loose and nails and screws all kind of get loose and they leak and so they get mold inside and when they get mold inside, a lot of times that mold, because of the materials are used, that's deadly for you. I mean deadly, in this, first it affects your immune system and then your immune system gets compromised and the deadly part comes in when your immune system is compromised and then you get, say, a flu or cold. Oh, that's right. They don't exist anymore. The flus and colds are gone. If you get CV, right? Because that killed off the cold, killed off all the flus, and now the only thing you ever get tested for is that CV thing. And if you get that, and you already are compromised, now that's what the long haulers thing is about. And in other words, you already have a, a mold infection that's compromising your immune system, or you have uh, a lot of people are walking around with a number of different um, um, bacterial issues they're not aware of. It could be infections in their teeth and their gums that are causing their system to be compromised. It could be infections like mold and, or, or toenails and stuff like that that are a problem. Athlete's foot. These are all fungus and you can cure them. A lot of those things actually can be cured with your own um, urine. Uh, dandruff, athlete's foot, um, infections on your skin, stuff like that. Surprisingly enough, it's sterile. When it comes out of you, it's sterile. Don't take my word for it. If you want to do the research like I did before, I believed it in my 50s. Um, it goes back into India. It goes back through thousands of years. Your nasal passages help your body, if you have a healthy intestinal tract and biome, to produce all the antibodies you need. It produces the antimicrobial agents, the antifungal agents, and the antibacterial agents out of your own urine that you can use to cure your athlete's foot and such not somebody else's, your own. Now, why am I bringing that up? And what's it got to do with tiny houses? Everybody keeps asking me that. What's that got to do with tiny houses? Well, um, tiny houses is part of a concept of moving to downsizing, to minimizing um, your footprint per se on the planet, but also on society. How, how much damage do you do by your existence? By damage, I mean, do you take more than you give? The kind of people that just have no problem being on every possible freebie, every giveaway. They stand in line for hours to get a t-shirt or something. Now, tell me something. Is your time not worth more than that if you used it better? You could make it worth more than that if you saw it worth more than that. Now, you really need to look at this from the standpoint of open your mind up. Why? Because you've been kind of boxed in over the years. I'm going to have some coffee. It's not, it's not beer. It's coffee with a top on it. Now, 
if you knew that you could put bentonite clay on your infected wound and actually have it heal and draw the infection out of it and um, you didn't have to go to the doctor wow and I'm not talking about days I'm talking about 15 minutes which would you do would you go ahead and put a bunch of medicines on there and wait for days while an infection got worse or would you go ahead and try some of the old fashioned ex things that used to be done before they had big pharma to come around and help you out and tell you that you needed them. You had to have them. I asked a podiatrist once. I said, if somebody comes to you and they got athlete's foot. We're on a little tour of all the houses. And I said, if somebody comes to you with athlete's foot, what do you prescribe? Because see, well, I had athlete's foot for 15 years when I was younger. In my 30s, 40s. And it, what, if you haven't had it, it's like a, like a rash, like a bubbly rash on the bottom. It causes you to itch. And, it, and it's just basically kind of eats away at the bottom of your foot. <clears throat> you get very uncomfortable. Um, I used Lotrimins and all different kinds of brand names on my feet. I tried everything. And uh, in the end, um, turns out that's really all you need to do. And so, so the podiatrist tells me, oh, I'll give them uric acid, uric tablets. Uri urine, urine, urine. No, urine, not my urine, Ur urine. Somebody's urine, but not mine. You want me to put it in my mouth anyway, right? And I'm going to take somebody else's uric acid, urine, and... um that would cure my athlete's foot. And guess what? I can make my own. Isn't that cool? And then you have to go to the doctor. Um, it works on other things too, believe it or not. Um, ear infections, eye infections, nasal infections, sinus infections. You can actually snort it up, gargle it, spit it out if it's fresh. This is crazy talk for some people. Woo! What's that boy talking about? Now, I am not a doctor. I am not a medical professional. Hmm. I am not anything. I am a writer in a fictional world talking about a place called Salvage, Texas that doesn't exist where they do things that doctors would tell you don't do. Don't do that. Don't heal yourself with green light, laser light. Don't do that. Don't use green filters, glass filters on the front of a slide projector with 500 watt bulb and shine it over a wound such as oh, you can't even see. I got a scar on this finger. See if you can see that scar. And the scar runs from way over here all the way down here. and runs all the way up to the other side. Vinegar is good too. Yes, it actually is very good. But it, it's acidic, 5.5. And um, that can be a problem for you. Um, if you want to go more to the alkali level than vinegar, Amy, um, yeah, that makes a little bit of a difference for some people. Um, no, I lost it. I lost it. Darn. Anyway. All these little tricks are for you to be able to go ahead and not only live tiny, live off grid, live healthy, um, practice techniques that have been around forever. On the green light therapy, if you put that about this far away from you um, with a slide projector, I've had it. Oh, this this oh, I was talking about. I smashed my finger in a rafter and smashed it so hard with a rafter and in the, in the ridge rafter like this that I actually split the finger open. So I pulled it out of the glove. I lifted it up and showed my worker the bone, about an inch of bone actually was exposed right there, and laid the pad back down and, um, you know, like us guys do, I had some trimycin, that's like bacitracin and all the mycins, I put that on there and I, my first aid kit consisted of some white paper that I tore off of something and wrapped around it and some duct tape. I highly recommend duct tape. I did have three ibuprofen. And, but I use my green laser. Now I carry a one watt laser with me with a diffuser on the end. The diffuser allows you to then take and put it on you and not burn yourself. If you take it off, you can actually fry an ant with a one watt laser. If it's in your car, it's a healing device with a diffuser on it. I highly recommend it. But now if you take the diffuser off and you're a young lady or somebody doesn't want to get messed with and somebody starts to mess with you, you just have not have the diffuser on there and you just have that little laser with that one watt green beam coming out of it. <clears throat> well, let me tell you something. I can see you with these eyes. You flash that green laser across these eyes. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. It's like Star Wars. It wipes out their eyes. It's a non-lethal form of defense. If somebody's got a gun pointed at you and you want to go ahead and mess with their ability to see you, thus to shoot you, you can do that at 20, 30 feet, 50 feet, 75 feet away. In fact, you 
don't dare stick it pointing up in the air because it just might blind somebody in a jet six miles away. Hmm. And would you believe you can buy these wonderful toys for about 60 bucks? Military grade lasers? Green, I suggest, or blue, industrial grade. Be very careful. These are not toys. But nothing powerful. Frequency. 5G, for example. Not a toy. They are weapons in the wrong hands. They are healing devices. And all sorts of positive things. Treated with care in the right hands. If you get one of those green lasers, there's a pair of glasses that you should put on until you know what you're doing. Because if you flash that thing around and you hit something really reflective and it bounces it back and hits your eyes, guess what? You're going to reduce your vision capacity dramatically fast and it's irreversible. It's not like the flash of a, say, camera. Now, again, that little device, so while you can buy it, I highly recommend you buy it because it's probably not going to be available to the general public in the near future. In fact, I actually got mine when you could get it from China for $59 on eBay and such. And again, one watt with a diffuser and you can heal. I healed that, never did take any more painkiller. I kept working with it, stopped all the pain, stopped the bleeding. The laser is literally that amazing. And then I just flashed on this spot right here this spot right here and this spot right here and run across there and then run on the wound like I was sewing it together. I didn't get stitches done on that. That's why the scar on it is pretty big. I kept working that day, drove home that night, unloaded the trailer, unloaded the truck and drove back out again and worked all the next day, banging it up, hitting it some more times. If it started to bleed, I put the laser on it, stopped the pain, stopped the bleeding, had it healed in three weeks, no stitches. Now, that sounds like a crazy story. The craziest story was that I used to use a slide projector in the old days, 500 watt, with two green glass light filters on it. I highly recommend those. They just use a lot more energy. And you fly about this far away, it gives you a pretty good area, though, that big of an area green. How well does it work? The best case, I'm going to give you one last case here, and this is important because a lot of people are dealing with diabetes. In about 1993, 92 maybe, I, I had a client. I was a real estate broker. And I had one of my clients, is Captain Kirk, retired captain, 73 years old. And he came to me one day in the office and he had a slipper on, and he had a sock and I, his shoe on the other foot. And I said, man, you look a little depressed today. What's wrong? He said, I just came from the doctors. They told me I'm gonna, I've got gangrene and I'm diabetic and the antibiotics aren't working. They're going to take my foot off Wednesday in surgery. And I said, wow. I said, I know you're not going to believe what I'm going to tell you, but I'm going to give you my slide projector and I want you to take it home and 15 minutes at night and 15 minutes in the morning, I want you to shine it from this far away on that wound, on that foot. And then nothing else. He did. And he went into surgery on Wednesday. Into the actual, into surgery. And the doctors showed up after they cleaned him all up and they looked at that foot. They said, we're not cutting that foot off. That's getting better. We don't know why, but it's looking good. He brought me the light back six weeks later, <clears throat> wearing both shoes. He was fixed. I said, hey, did you ever tell your doctors? He said, hey, no, they thought I was crazy. I said, yeah, thank you. He said, no, thank you. Why is that important? Before that, before I found out about the green light, I had another customer, another client. I had his house listed. He was a veteran. I watched him get one leg amputated. Then I watched him get the other leg amputated. And by the time I sold his house, he was in a bed in the bedroom where I had him sign the contract at in adult diapers. Heartbreaking. Green light. You know, if you don't believe it works, for $35, you can buy a slide projector. For $15, you can buy a green glass light filter, maybe two of them. Put them on the front with tinfoil from this far away, twice a day. 
that green energy happens to be the same as the green light you produce out of your heart that is what forms your through DNA the green light matrix electrical matrix that all organic matter sticks to to form this human you're looking at it's energy it's frequency it's generated by me to look like I look with intention this didn't just happen it takes intention it takes a little work it takes spirit and mind working together with body bodies for this lazy thing but understand it please there are other ways to be healthy to get healthy get your feet on the ground 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 why nothing operates without a good ground not a car not a phone nothing inflammation breeds cancer if you don't put your feet on the ground barefoot on the ground you will inflame you won't get the energy out of you you won't get a good circuit air is positive earth is negative you breathe in air you convert it to energy through your body through digestion oxygen oxygen but you have to have ground if you don't you'll get inflamed you'll get sick all you people out there that are just so fond of getting sick you just get too much attention stop getting sick get healthy the rest of you who don't want to get sick who don't enjoy being sick who don't enjoy all the attention you get out of being sick you can be healthier and trust me, you're talking to somebody who grew up being as sick as anybody could be most of the time. And I had all the things, chicken pox, measles, both kinds. I had it twice. I also had other things. Now I find out they call it Epstein-Barr. Back then they called it mononucleosis. I almost died from my bladder being infected or my spleen being infected, peeing out blood. I almost died from bleeding to death from nosebleeds. Broke my back as a kid. I got to experience wonderful, wonderful lessons in how do you take care of your body without depending on doctors. Why? Jeez. Guess what? I'm 65. Do you know what the average lifespan of a doctor in America in the American Medical Association is? About 65. Actually, 63, I think. Now tell me something. Most of the doctors that I would have to go see, well, I don't know. I don't see them as being in the condition I would want to be in. Now, why would I want to ask them for advice when I spent my life studying it? I don't have a degree in medicine. And again, don't listen to a word I'm saying without verifying it. But if you do, well, blessings. Blessings. All right, guys, I got to get out of here. I got an appointment. Hopefully, we're going to sell a bunch of wood to somebody that's going to turn it into a beautiful place for some of the people who want to get out of Austin, San Antonio, or Houston can come to. Well, you might want to get out of some other places, too. You actually think about it. <clears throat> oh, yeah, two or three more snowstorms coming. Snow storms. I saw buildings collapsing. <sighs> get ready, guys. It's going to be a blast for you. Uh, snowbirds. You want to come down here and maybe own a house in Salvage, Texas that you can write off to the government and spend a month or two, write off all your food down here while you're working on your business, that B&B &B down in Texas, or make it your residence whereby you don't have to have any income tax. And you go back up north on those couple months, it gets warm again. Oh, I'm joking around. It's like warm for about four months, isn't it? Five. All right, guys. I hope you get this advice. Please share. Honestly, I'm not a doctor. That is not medical advice. It is woo-woo in the book of Wibblery and Wub. That's what Darby uses in that book, in that fantasy. And it works for him in that fantasy because he uses that plus the placebo effect. If you've heard about the placebo effect, that's where you actually believe something's going to work and lo and behold, you're better. I firmly believe. And if you have faith and you believe, enough of us believe that we're going to get through this well those of us who believe will and those of you who are thinking otherwise that your uncle making you might be right which do you want to be that's what it comes down to i hope this helps thanks guys